In the last lesson, we introduced some more context to the site plan by adding in the surrounding buildings. Let's now add in some more context by showcasing the surrounding paths and the surrounding roads as well. If you'd like to watch all the other 40 plus lessons available as well as gain access to all the course files and 50 bonus textures and PNG trees you can use for your own site plans, check out the full Photoshop site course on my website. The link is down in the description below. If we go back to our first file, and we close this context because that's all done now. Let's have a look at where some of these paths go. If we want to add in the paths, it's very similar to just adding in the context. We can just draw these in. I'm going to press the P key and this is going to bring up the pen tool. And now what I can do is actually just draw in using the curvature pen tool. I can draw in some of these roads. If I want to be sure of where they are, remember you can turn on that Google Earth layer and you can just turn that opacity to 100 and you can see where these parts actually are. As you can see, the Google Earth image is not actually to the correct scale because I just brought it in from the other file, but your image is going to be to scale and that will be fine. As you can see, the road is a little bit off there and that means that the path would actually be a little bit in, but that's okay, we can live with this. It'll be fine. I'm going to actually just turn that back to 15%. I'm not going to go off of that. Now with the pen tool, I'm going to fill in this road. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to start drawing this in just with a white stroke with no fill and the stroke size is going to be dependent on how wide the road actually is. So let's turn this up and let's have a play around. Let's try 45. Definitely needs to be a lot bigger than that. Let's try 100. Let's see if that's the right size. Could be a little bit bigger. I reckon let's make this 115. I'm just going to delete that. And now that I've got my pen tool back up, I'm gonna make this 115. I'm gonna create a new layer. And I'm going to start drawing in this road, making sure I'm on the curvature pen tool because we want this to be a free flowing curve. I'm going to move this over in a second. Gotta make sure that some of these are straight and you can control this to create yourself a road. I'm going to just drop these into place and kind of manipulate these points to create it a little bit more straighter and follow that edge a little bit more. Might actually delete that point there and then it gives it a bit more of a curve. It's just a matter of playing around with this now and getting it right. It doesn't have to be perfect again because it's just for contextual sake. I'm gonna delete that point and bring this point up, make it a little bit smoother. That point can go as well. Bring that one there, bring this one there. I'm going to add another point there actually. I fall into my own trap. I say it doesn't have to be perfect and then I start playing around with it for like 20 minutes. So I'm just going to leave it like that. That's pretty good I would say. Now we can add in some of the smaller parts which run along here. You can see even though it's kind of faint this Google Earth image if we to bring that up you can see that path there. So let's go ahead and draw that in. Create a new layer. I'm going to use the pen tool again. I'm going to drop this probably to 45, I reckon, and then I'm going to draw in that path, making sure we're on the curvature pen tool. Just draw that in, follow it around. Bob's your uncle, there you go. Create another little one that goes through here. Now you've got yourself some paths and it looks pretty good. Let's group these ones up by control, um, hold shift, select the first one, select the last one, control G to group them all together and let's call this paths. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this again, make sure it looks nice and good. That looks pretty good in my opinion. If you want, you can add a texture over the top of these strokes. What you could do is rasterize the layers and then you could select all of the pixels and then just add a mask over it. So what's next? Let's go ahead and look over here. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to improve your ground texture by adding in some more details. I'll see you there.